Guitars, and I just want to take a moment today, while we've got significant stock of these new guitars, to tell you about an exciting new release that we saw from the 2020 NAMM show at Nags Guitars. This is their new Can I J. So this is obviously a little bit of a take and a reference to uh, Gibson Junior models. So we're looking at three different models in the range and that's why I wanted to make this video quickly just to, to show you what we've got. We've got three examples of the different models that they've got in their range. So this is a D1 model. I'm presuming referring to the Dog Ear P90 single pickup in the bridge. You've also got a P2, which has got two P90s over my shoulder there. And there's also an H2, which has got the kind of traditional nags uh, formula of two humbuckers in the guitar. I think these are really fantastic instruments. I've played them all. We've got sound clips in this video that you're gonna hear. And honestly, I think they're some of the best playing uh, guitars in this kind of field, where you're looking at very simple, no nonsense, no frills kind of guitars. Very unlike what people might be aware of with Nags guitars, and I think that was the whole point that they wanted to get across. So in this video, I'm not going to talk endlessly about these guitars. I'm going to let Joe Nags uh, give you all the info that you want to know himself. If you want to find out more about these guitars, go and check out the interview that we shot with him at NAMM, uh, just gone, where he really went into great detail about the ethos and kind of design ideas behind these guitars, and why it's a bit of a departure now for Nags guitars, and he wants to do things in a slightly different way. I think it's really cool, and all I wanted to say in this video was that I think they're fantastic instruments. I think you're going to really like them if you get your hands on them. As I said, it's not maybe what you traditionally expect from Nags guitars, but it's a very different side of Joe Nags's guitar building personality that I think will appeal to a lot of people. And I do honestly think these are some of the very best in class. Speaking of, I think that's a good segue into the new model because this is something that a lot of people are really, really hot on these days is the kind of going back to a simpler guitar design. And it's really telling of a brand's identity as to what elements go into that guitar. So this is the Kanai Junior, or J, is that right? Yeah, the Kanai J, right. This is called the Kanai J P2, okay. which is two P90s. Okay. So what were some of the elements that, that you wanted to stamp, the next stamp on this kind of guitar design? Well, I would say the biggest thing with this guitar is it's based around the Kanai shape. So it's not a junior shape, no. okay? It's a little bigger guitar, right, than a junior. You know, our guitars are 13 and a half at the waist, I mean, at the lower bound. Right. You know, for me, that adds a little bit more ring, okay? You know, a bigger, a little bit more bass to it, okay? So you get a little bit more of a low mid-range, I think, okay? <coughs> we went with Seymour Duncan P90s, and we went with a Tone Pros wraparound, and we went this because people are used to a wraparound bridge. Yeah. You know, I want to make one of these with our influence bridge on it. But this works out good. People are more used to that. Of course, this wraparound bridge intonates. Okay, so yeah. Yeah. that's one step to me in a better direction. You know, the old junior <laughs> was the back part of a tunematic bridge, and it's like yeah. So they never really. And it either worked or it didn't. No. You know, but, but they were great, but they never really intonated properly. So. Sure. We wanted the guitar to intonate, so obviously that's great. And Tone Bros does a great job with yeah. their bridges. They really, I, I remember them coming to me in the very beginning with, when I was with PRS, and we didn't really do anything with them. But I've watched Dwight really do a lot of great things with their bridges. Right. They come out with a really great alloy that sounds really good, you know? Very light, the guitar as well, we very light. We try to use lighter, you know, a little bit lighter wood, but not super light, no. you know? Uh, they lose a lot of low end, don't they, I, I find. When, when the guitars are too light, they just don't have the bottom end to it, do I, they? So yeah. somewhere in the middle, Johnny, yeah. you know? Yeah. So you, want, you want the snap as well, yeah. don't you? But and That too, exactly. But really super heavy guitars can be very trebly and yeah. kind of stale, you know? But they might have a little bit of low end in them. But anyway, uh, to me, the biggest thing with this guitar, we make our necks a certain way, okay? Yeah. So you go back to, uh, you know, the nuances of building guitars, okay? I always call it this, all right? When a 
great player like you, great player like Steve, great player like Eric, JP, okay? When they picked the guitar up as a professional player, Johnny, you're probably a great player too. Used you to know. Be. He is? Used to be. I call it the extra 10%, okay? You know, all guitars are up to a certain level. There's some real crap, there's some good stuff. There's some pretty good stuff, okay? And there's some really good stuff, you know? I look at it like a professional artist is gonna hear that other 10%. Yeah, okay, that last 10% that a professional can hear and feel. Because I want my guitars to sustain, okay? You can always stop them from sustaining. Yeah. You can't make them sustain more unless you use an overdrive pedal or something. You know, but even there, I want the guitar to say, sustain, so when you're using that overdrive pedal, it really nice. blooms. Yeah. Yeah. When the guitar sustains, the note blooms, okay? You got harmonics that stack on top of each other, and that grows. So, if you put your ear to a guitar and you pluck the note, you can listen to it go up, it'll go down, it'll go up, and really not good guitars decay and go down. Okay, really good ones go up, they level, they go up again, they might go down a little bit, they go up again, they level, and they go up again. That's all the different harmonics feeding that note so that it can continue on, you know? And that's the biggest thing, I think, with our guitars. Yeah. That's what I hear out of people, man, your guitars ring forever, your guitars ring so nice. They also describe them to have this certain clarity, you that's know, right. this yeah. certain... Uh, it's that harmonic level, you know? Yeah. So anyway, that's really the main thing that I look for. And then on top of that, you want them to look really nice. Yeah, sure. So. Yeah. Just for context, I'm playing uh, the brand new JHS PG14 Paul Gilbert Signature Overdrive pedal into a very clean Dr. Z Maz 38 amplifier. <laughs>
So that's it. I hope you enjoy the sound clips in this video. If you want any more info on these guitars or indeed any of Nag's Guitars products that we stock here at Peach, you can of course find it all out at peachguitars.com. So I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks as always for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and you give us a like and comment down below with your thoughts. Stay tuned till next time and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.